Are you, you or Afrisam feeling encouraged by the 2019 budget and Treasury's announcement that 100 billion um, rand will be shifted to the infrastructure fund? And Murad, what sort of impact will this actually have on Afrisam? So when I look at the 2019 budget relative to previous budgets, there, there isn't much to suggest that we're going to see a quick upturn in terms of real spend. Uh, in the past, we've, we've seen some of these announcements being made before, but the challenge has always been the ability of the various provinces and the municipalities to spend. So uh, until we start to see real spend coming through, uh, we're not much more encouraged than we were a year ago. We pretty much, if we look at the confidence levels in the, in the sector, we, we share the sentiment that um, it's going to take a while before we see this coming through. And uh, we saw the construction industry fall on hard times in 2018, with companies like Basel Reed uh, depending on growth in the industry to recover. Do you think we'll see positive strides in the industry this year? I think what we've seen in terms of market decline and the impact that it has on, cons on construction companies, we've probably bottomed out now. I think we're probably through the worst. Uh, we've also seen companies like uh, Group 5 and Avenge selling off non-core assets to try and sort of restructure their businesses and focus more on, on their core uh, functions. So we will start to see companies a, a little bit leaner, being a little bit more competitive, um, and, and hopefully things will start to, to pick up a little bit. But again, some of these companies will go through a difficult time for a while still because uh, until we have major infrastructure projects coming through, Dr. Zah Jamin's presentation was very clear on the cut in energy costs, for example, the likes of Kusile and Mudupi coming to an end. There aren't big replacements for those big civil projects. So until we start to see some big civil projects coming through, we think that these companies will be under severe strain for a while still. And then uh, we know that the industry is still facing some severe challenges. Could you tell us a little bit about how FSM is mitigating these? So in light of the current strain that the industry is facing, you know, FSM fortunately uh, two to three years ago, we embarked on a project of restructuring our business, taking out inefficient capacity. So we've gone through the pain as a business. We've right-sized, uh, we've, we've, we've cut uh, our labor force, and we've done a lot of the difficult stuff which some of our, our competitors are starting to do now. So we're starting to see the benefit of, of all those cost-cutting initiatives. We're starting to see that our company, as a result of taking out some fixed cost, we're able to be a lot more competitive in the market. But overall, we still have a situation where there's way too much capacity and there's an oversupply of cement. Imports are, are, are continuing to go up. So as an industry, we are also looking to approach um, the DTI and ITEC to see what we can do about these imports to reduce the number of imports coming into the country to protect jobs. Um, but, but as AFRISAM, I think we've been through the difficult times. We've, we've done all the cost cutting that we could have done and now we're on an upward trajectory. And then uh, we know that policy and political uncertainty has its own slew of constraints and um, Aubrey actually predicted that the next five years or so will still be characterised by this. Um, what sort of adverse effects could this have on the industry? So if I could use the uncertainty that, that has been referred to by Aubrey Mantrika, the political analyst. So one practical example is if you look at coalition governments that we've seen since the last uh, provincial government elections, the Eastern Cape being an example where you've had the DA and the EFF uh, running the Eastern Cape. And we, we've seen the effect where you don't have a cohesive leadership, where you don't have policy certainty, where people don't work well together. The impact on that is decisions simply don't get made. Budgets don't get passed. Uh, there's always these votes of no confidence. And the thing that worries us, if I think about what, what Aubrey referred to about the possibility of having the Gauteng government, for example, being a, 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 another coalition government, and this is the economic hub of South Africa, it does concern us that we will have more political uncertainty and an industry like ours relies on policy certainty because the people who invest in infrastructure want to take a long-term view. And if, if we can sort out issues around the mining charter, issues around land expropriation and all the things that 
add to this uncertainty. If we can get those out of the way, get through the elections relatively smoothly, we think that uh, the market might start to turn again and the private sector might start to get a little bit more confident in terms of investing.